feel pretty good. <laughs> and I'm not, uh, I'm not scared at all. I just feel kind of, I feel kind of invincible. <laughs> me too. I got a very positive attitude about this. Good, me too. Yeah. getting hot in here is it just all right i'm inside the uh the power amp of your 19 oh, 63 64 ac30 this was the base model initially and you can see i'm doing some cleanup work um so we have a, a 30 microfarad uh, mod cap um, you can see that i've uh, replaced some of the uh, aging terminal strips that weren't really an appropriate location. I'm not going to drill new holes, um, but I can, in a sense, change the shape and orientation by choosing, um, by selecting the appropriate terminal strip that has um, a particular lug grounded that I want. So it's going to bring them into the shape that I need to, to uh, organize this. And you can see I've already done quite a bit. Um, the ground right here, this is a preamp ground, um, if I'm not mistaken. I think this is going over to the trim and vibe channel. And then maybe the bright channel. I, I, I don't quite recall just right now. Um, in any case, um, it's not going to be grounded along with the power amp. Um, these uh, preamp filter nodes should be grounded on the, the cathodes of that particular stage. That The fact that this shares um, a, a couple different stages isn't going to really make a difference as to which one I grounded at up there. Um, but, but you can see that it's going to be going in that direction. Um, I've got the uh, screen grids up in the air. 100 ohms is totally fine um, because of the internal winding resistance of these old uh, power transformers. Back in the day, engineers used to take that into account. Nowadays, people just um, look at the schematic value and say, hey, um, uh, it, it has to be 100 or it has to be 1K or what have you. Um, but people these days aren't really designing. They're not um, taking into account the winding resistance inside of here. Uh, that would impact the amount of total resistance that you need for the, these particular nodes. So I will be moving these up to um, to one case, um, just as a, a prophylactic measure. Um, it's not going to change the tone or feel all that much. When you start going around two K, then I notice that you'll get some more uh, compression and all that stuff. Um, and then speaking of um, ideal operating conditions uh, you're looking at a, a day and age where the wall voltage is up you know 125 nowadays so um, that's going to push these guys quite a bit over that uh, that margin of, of safety for for these tubes so um, there's it's not a hidden feature but just a limitation of the original switch on, on these particular on the primary end of this guy you have a, a ton of different taps um, and you had access to that um, by way of that, uh, the flimsy little selector up top. Uh, obviously, this chassis is oriented in a different direction. You can't see it. Um, but um, you can actually combine uh, a couple different taps and then uh, obviously connect that with the other end of the switch, which would be that zero tap, the zero volt tap, and um, essentially create a uh, 130 volt setting, which will um, well, put this thing right in the sweet spot. Um, I did pressure test this old Sprague Atom. These are the good ones. Um, they're not stuffing a cheaper cap inside of this little casing here. Um, this 50 watt, 5 watt uh, resistor will be fine. Uh, where it is, there's a little bit of silicon, or silicone rather, at the bottom of this on the other side of the chassis. And then you can see here, um, I created a more uh, reliable uh, joint for the ground here on the chassis, and it's just going up you can probably see that bit of bus wire one more thing these are not ideally laid out this, this is horrible so i'm gonna correct this as much as possible uh, we, we don't need to be clever here we just need to do it the right way i just there's so many better ways to go about this I, i'm not going to re-engineer this that's outside the scope of this particular project but it's kind of nasty um, almost done with the power amp. I do have to clean the place up a bit more. So and we have our Omite 1K resistors here. We have some new carbon comps on the grids. Everything laid out nicely.
And then we have an artificial center tap off the heater supply floating a bit. Above ground for some additional um, noise reduction. So there's a little, there's a little jumper right there. You need to break that, um, that length chassis when you install that artificial center tap. An appropriate place to ground your filter cap for that uh, vibe and trim channel and also the brilliant channel. You know, I might be messing up the uh, the posterior of that comment. I would be on a, uh, the cathode of um, the V7 tube and it's uh, Vox's uh, nomenclature is, is always frustrating for me because it's alien. Um, I, I need to see things sequentially, but they don't do that. Um, they're more logical um, in, in a sense um, you can't just throw um, V1 through whatever, 9, uh, through here like you would in a fender because it's just not how this works. But a good spot to ground this would be on the ground side of this cathode bypass cap here. So I'll do that in a, a neat fashion. Bye. All right, that's that. Uh, now I'm going to trim out a large portion of this ground bus, say about right here, and just lay out a new one. All right, you can see the new bus wire length there, and then where it was crimped to the original one. I'm gonna go through and change out some plate resistors that are giving me some grief, and then I have to do some cleanup on aisle six here. And then I can start testing. All right, we're just wrapping up these plate loads it looks like that uh, 270k and a 220k are inverted usually it's the opposite way but well, maybe that's part of what makes these little guys unique yeah so the guy at the factory maybe he was a little too aggressive and you can see the other end of that terminal still stuck to the the end of the lead here right of the um proximal end of the lead on this next to the resistor casing. So I'm going to knock these out. These are 264 and 250 something K respectively. That's how they're measuring out. So they're going to go. I'm going to put some nice 600 volt caps there. All right. And we're back. So here's your phase inverter situation corrected. Ah, I got to fix this. It's bothering me. I got one of them inverted. One of the resistors Fender has the uh, tolerance rating, uh, the tolerance band pointing to the tube sockets. Uh, Vox doesn't seem to give a damn. They, they point it towards the opposite end of the chassis um, from what I'm seeing. So, um, and, and then it, it's really just willy nilly. Look, they're, they're just hodgepodge. So um, that concludes um, the I guess the main thrust of the service so far, I do have to do some aesthetic things. Um, I can move on to testing. So um, you can see how I work with some of the broken tabs. And then one of uh, these was broken, the one here on this bypass cap. The lower one was broken by the prior tech, um, or the upper one rather. Um, and then uh, what I do instead of just making a, a pool of solder and tacking it down, is look, you, you just use the next available terminal. Let's use the upper or lower one. And I, you can see I, I had to do it here as well. That was the original one that I had brought up, so. All right.